Hello, I'm Alana Tucky, lead faculty for several courses in the math department at Jackson College. In this video, I'm going to show instructors how to get into my math lab and get their courses copied for um, Jackson College math courses. So if you're a new adjunct to Jackson College in the math department, or if you're an adjunct that has been working with us for a while and you don't know how to register and get started, this video should help you, hopefully. And if not, or if you have other questions, make sure you write them in the comment section and I can reply to you. Okay, so if you've never been in my math lab before for another college or anything, you're going to need to go to register now and you want to click on educator because you're an instructor. Students, if you're watching this, you want to click on student. So you click on educator. And then you should um, click on no, I would like to request access. Unless your um, lead faculty has gotten you access codes already, you could always contact your lead faculty and ask them. And then you'll say, you know, read all this through. You're an instructor who's considering using it. Before requesting access, you must agree to these terms and conditions. So all downloadable files are protected by copyright laws, that kind of thing. So I click I agree after I've read it through thoroughly. And then you're going to say what country you're in, which would be the United States. Go. And then what type um, we are to your college. So you click there. We're 49201 as our zip code. Even if you're teaching in um, Adrian or Hillsdale, click 49201 and say go. Or if you're at another college, wherever you might be, then choose whatever your zip code is. And our institution would be Jackson College. And you can see here, you can click LISD campus. Um, you do not want to click Hillsdale College, even if you're teaching in Hillsdale. So you'll just say Jackson Community College. The easiest thing to do is just Jackson Community College. That's the simplest. And then your department would be the Department of Mathematics and Engineering, ENGRA, E-N-G-R-G, -E Engineering. So you'd click that department. And then it's going to ask you your discipline. Um, for most of us, it'll be you know developmental math or um, uh, not finite math, probably. Yeah, developmental math should be one of them, that one. Um, you might have introductory statistics as another one, that kind of thing. Then you're going to want to put in your address, your city, your state, etc. Your department chair is Christy Laird currently. If that changes, you'd put in whoever the department chair is, their phone number. Um, which Christie's is 7968503. Um, the email would be Laird Christie K at jccmi.edu, provided that that doesn't change. I'm making this currently now, but I don't know what would happen in the future. Obviously, it's Michigan for your state, hopefully. Um, hopefully, you're not living in Alaska and trying to teach at the college, et cetera. Um, Let's see. Oh, the address for the college. Sorry, I apologize. This is the address for the college. That's 2111 Emmons Road. That would be Jackson, Michigan. Okay, so there's all that information. So this is institutional information. I apologize. So institution information, address, city, that's the department chair. Then you fill out your personal information. You want to make sure um, that you use an email that you actually check. I would highly recommend using your JC email because um, then it's more official and it comes to your JC email address. You can actually make it so your JC email forwards to any other email you have, like your Gmail or something like that. So I would strongly, strongly recommend that you pick your JC address if you have one. If not, if you have another um, address, then put that in there. But by all means, make it sure it's something you check because that'll be a responsibility of yours to check your email regularly. You want to make sure that you click that you're an instructor and so on. Um, and then for your author and book, that depends on all of this. Um, you will have adopted a book, and it's a question of what book it is. To find out that, you can look at your instructor info pages for whoever your lead faculty is. Um, for my courses and um, some other faculty courses, we actually have it all on a single page. Some of them, it might be in JetNet in the Math Online repository. So wherever that happens to be, if you look at the syllabus, it'll tell you what your course book is and you can say that you've adopted it because it's adopted um, it's for me it's statistics informed decisions using data the fourth edition by um, michael sullivan and so on oops and so on and then you submit your request and my understanding is they get back to you pretty quickly um, with 
approval or a, co a code or whatever for access for instructors. Once you have that access, then you have a whole other issue. Now, keep in mind, if you've gained access to my math lab from another institution, let's say you were an instructor at um, Eastern Michigan University or Washtenaw Community College or something like that, then you might actually already have my math lab, have used it. If you've used my math lab before, you do not need to do this registration process at all. You can just click on sign in. So the registration process is only for brand new instructors. And some of you, your lead faculty might have already gotten you access so or have, have cleared it with Pearson. So your access request will come through very quickly and rapidly. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you've already been in my math lab for another institution or for our institution, you can skip over the whole registering thing. Registering is only for your first time, I'm an instructor, I really belong in here, let me in kind of a thing. Um, if you've already been in or have a code or something like that, then you're going to want to click sign in. And I can close that down because I don't, I don't need to request access, I have access. Oh, I apologize, it already knows me because I've already signed in, so I didn't have to show the login page, but there, actually, let me just show you real quick. There's the login page. So you would sign in with your username and password. No, I will not tell you what mine is. <laughs> so um, sign in with your username and password, and you will have maybe no classes in here, maybe one class in here, you know, whatever. I've been teaching for a long time, so I have lots and lots of classes. So what you want to do is you want to be able to copy the template course. So in the fall, usually the lead faculty for the courses create a template course that people copy and, and make their own. So for example, my information for 133 for this fall semester is right here. So instructors are copying this course ID right here, Tucky 72387. For my Math 131 course, it was Tucky 82914. And all that information is either on the Math Online repository in JetNet or on, on the instructor info page if your instructor um, lead faculty has an instructor info page. Okay, so mine's right there. So I'm going to, and you will, not have that many courses. If you use, use my math lab before, you might see a course or two in here from whatever course you've used before. So you will click create copy course, and then you want to copy a course, and then you want to copy another instructor's course, and then you're going to enter that ID. So for me, it was Tucky 72387. So let me type that 72387. Go. And now you're going to label it. So I highly recommend um, a couple things. I recommend putting in the section number. So this is 133.03 for me, say. So I'm going to label this 133.03. I'm going to say what semester it is, because if you teach multiple semesters in a row, it's going to get very confusing as to, wait, which semester was this class? What was going on? So for me, this is fall 15, fall 2015. Um, and then I personally like to put in the dates and times. So this is a Tuesday, Thursday class. So TR from 11 to 12, well, 11 to 1. Let's just put that. That way I kind of have for my own benefit, you know, this is statistics course um, meets Tuesday, Thursday meets um, in JM248. That's my classroom or something like that. This is for student enrollment. And then down here, the enrollment start date. So you want to click on the little calendar and you want to choose what day um, enrollment can begin in this class. So for me, it's the 8th of September, um, but you'll pick whatever date is appropriate. I usually try the first day of class or so for my enrollment start date. You technically can put enrollment a little bit earlier. You can have students enroll before the course is actually ready to go, but who would ever know to go in there? Um, enrollment end date, when is the last day students can enroll? It might be tempting to make it later than the end of the semester, but don't do that. Or sorry, you don't want to make the enrollment too um, too early. So the temptation is to say, oh, students can't enroll after the first week, but that's not really realistic, especially if there are problems with my math lab. So you're better off picking a date kind of towards the end of the semester for the last day for enrollment. So I'm just going to pick a random day because it doesn't really matter. But somewhere at the end of the semester is your enrollment date. Then your course start date, I would select this, um, the day of the actual course beginning. The course end date, you do not want to make it the last day of the course because then the course shuts down and 
students can't see their grades anymore. So the last day for my particular semester that I'm making this video in is December 17th or December 21st. I don't want to make it then because then the, the course literally shuts down on them and they can't see grades the week after class is over. So I'm going to make it a couple weeks after class is over so they can get in and see their grades, see everything. And I'm personally going to make this available for copy for my own benefit because maybe I'll want to copy this course later or whatever. I might make tweaks in the fall semester and as long as I, the lead faculty, don't change the template between fall and winter, then that's no big deal and you can just keep using those tweaks from fall to winter. Then you click create course now and you have to wait. <laughs> so you can see the ID for the course. It's going to be Tucky 90465, but you have to wait for it to actually exist. So if I go back to my courses page, I can see it right there. It's got a little clock next to it and it'll just take a little while. Sometimes it's, they say a max of 24 hours. I've never had it take that long. It usually takes somewhere like, you know, between a minute and an hour, somewhere in there, the course will be fully developed and populated. And then this is the ID that you share with your students in class. So you share your name and because it'll have your name and it won't say Tucky. It'll say whatever your last name is. So if it's Smith, it'll say Smith 90465. And that's the, the code ID that you share with your students in your class so that they enroll in this section. All right, so I paused the video long enough and it, it literally took less than two minutes to get the course creation. Um, I got an email to the email that I signed up with for my math lab and it lets me know the course is done. So if I click refresh, I can see that that course is no longer has the little icon next to it. So I can click in it and the course will be there. And the lead faculty has already set up the homework assignments, um, what they are, but they have not set up the due dates. Um, me particularly, I've actually set up some prerequisites. So students cannot do this homework unless they watch this video because I'm assuming that this section is not done in class. That's kind of unique to the statistics course. That's less um, happening in algebra courses, for example, things like that. They don't have those videos embedded, but statistics has some videos embedded and the students can actually watch those videos. But the problem is that the lead faculty faculty sets up due dates that are basically the end of the whole school year. So next August of 2016 for me, so that's a long ways away. So what you want to do is click on course tools and a whole bunch of stuff comes in here that you really need, like your grade book. This will be your instructor grade book and the assignment manager is what you're interested in right now. So you want to click on assignment manager and you can click change dates and assign status and you can change the dates for all your assignments. So let's say I want this first assignment to be due. I'm going to click on a calendar here, September of there you go, September, I'm just going to make this up, 21st. And I usually make assignments due at 11.59 p.m. That way they have until nighttime to do um, the, the assignment for whatever reason. And you can sit there and do that to all of them. You can copy and paste. You can select multiples. There's a lot of options in here. Um, and then you want to click Update All Settings. And it'll say the settings have been saved and then cancel done. So now when I go back to the main menu and click on homework, I can see that that first assignment is due September 21st of 2015. And so you as an instructor can do that for all your assignments. So you're, you're going to want to make them due every week or every other week or something like that. Do not make them due all at the end of the semester because that is, from my personal experience, a recipe for disaster for the students. All right, so that should get you started with getting into there to my math lab and getting your courses and your homework set up. Um, everything else in here is of interest to you. The course tools in particular is interesting because you can play around with your instructor gradebook. You can put grades in for students for offline items and things like that for worksheets. So for that, you would just manage or add an offline item and you can add in a worksheet and put in a grade for them. Like say I want to add in the 1.1 worksheet or something like that and I want it to be worth 20 points and then there you have it. And then you'll be able to, once students are enrolled in here, you'll be able to put the grades for that assignment right in there in my math lab. All right, I hope 